I'm Mr. Bethauser. Welcome to Betland Economics. Today I'm outside the FDIC in Arlington, Virginia. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, was established in 1933 during the Great Depression. The purpose of the FDIC, as passed by Congress and signed into law by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, was to establish nationwide deposit insurance at banking institutions. So depositors would not lose any money if a bank were to fail. The FDIC has been in the news recently due to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. All deposits are safe, even those above the insured amount. Since the FDIC was established, no depositor has ever lost any money. One way that a bank could fail is if all depositors go to the bank at the same time to withdraw their money. A bank run occurs in the 1946 film, It's a Wonderful Life. Don't look now, but there's something funny going on over there at the bank, George. I've never really seen one, but that's got all the earmarks of being a run. The main character, George Bailey, explains what really happens to bank deposits. Bank deposits become loans for someone else. You're, you're, you're thinking of this place all wrong, as if I had the money back in a safe. I, the, the money's not here. Well, your money's in Joe's house, that's right next to yours, and in the Kennedy house, and Mrs. Maitland's house, and, and a hundred others. If a bank fails, the FDIC will step in to ensure that depositors have access to their funds. For a single account, the FDIC will insure up to $250,000 at each bank. Accounts insured by the FDIC include checking accounts, savings accounts, and certificates of deposit. Accounts that are not insured, among other things, include stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. The FDIC is not funded by taxpayer dollars, but by insurance premiums that are assessed to banks and other financial institutions. Deposit insurance in the United States helps to project confidence in the banking system. Until next time, thanks for watching.